Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Great Masters of Self-Realization, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Teshwar, and Beloved Guru Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religion, we offer ourselves as Thy channels for healing, for the transmission of thy joy, thy peace. Work through us that many souls may be carried into thy light. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Well, again, welcome everybody. And I, before we do our healing prayers, as it's traditional every week, we have a little short discourse or short sharing of some thoughts and some inspiration, which I'd like to do. And for those of you who came a little bit early, you may have seen the flyer that we put up saying that I maybe was going to speak about anxiety, but actually I'm not. <laughs> as I was thinking about it uh, this afternoon, about what should I speak about, that was one of the assigned up topics possibly, but I thought I'd like to instead share with you a story. It's a story of a blessing that I received and the, you might say healing blessing. Uh, so because it's pertinent to the topic and perhaps a lesson or two that I learned from that. And this story relates to a time in approximately, I really it was about 2010, so maybe a dozen years ago. And at that time, I was staying in Pune, full-time in Pune. And unfortunately, I was hospitalized because of a kidney stone. And I think some of you may have had kidney stones in the past, and they're not pleasant. And unfortunately, I had a very large kidney stone, and it was, uh, you might say, stuck. And there was no, it was not going to pass. And I was went to uh, doctors, and they said I had to go to the hospital. So I did. I, I ended up spending about three days there in the hospital as they did various treatments, sound treatments, to break the kidney stone up and, and have it pass. Well, that was, you might say, the background of uh, the story. And so it, uh, while I was there, as I was, as I was leaving, they said, oh, before you go, let, why don't you stay and have lunch? And before I go home, and I was just about on my way to you know, go back. I wasn't feeling too good by that time anyway, but I said, well, that makes sense. So I stayed for lunch and then uh, I went home. But sure enough, within about a few hours after that, I came down with severe gastrointestinal uh, disturbance. In other words, something like the deli belly or food poisoning or something like that. Uh, and then, you know, I always re was remember what you don't want to one place that you're likely to get sick is in the hospital. So as it turned out, that was what happened. So as you probably most of us have experienced that at some point in our life. So I was very, very ill and feeling very, very bad. And I had a little, even a little bit of fever. And uh, that was pretty much, I, I couldn't do anything. I was just, you know, not able to hold anything down. And I was feeling really, really, ill, really ill. So that night, uh, I went, you know, to bed, I was, I was released around lunchtime, and I got sick in the afternoon, and all through the evening, going through that. And finally, I went to bed. And in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, I sat, I, I awoke, because uh, there was some strange feeling I had, I awoke, I sat up in the bed, and I felt a wave of joy come into my body. And at the same time, simultaneously to that, I became aware that I, you know, I had was very, very ill. I felt joyful, but I was very ill. And I could feel I had the very tangible experience of the sickness is like a darkness within me exiting out of the body and with over or it took about a over a period of about four or five seconds just very starting from the base of my bottom of the body it went out it just it's like it was just it flew out of me and i was left in a state of joy in my bed very fully awake and i sat up and in the 
when in through my mind went this thought, I'm well. And it was a, it was a statement of surprise, happiness, joy, uh, and astonishment uh, from being extremely ill to 10 seconds later being not only well, but extremely well. And I sat up, I said, I'm well. And I just was in wonderment. What happened? What was that? Very startling. So I went, I laid back down and I went back to sleep and I had a, this was probably happened, but let's say it was 3.30 in the morning about that time. And I went back to sleep and I got up the next morning, early the next morning. And as I normally would some, sometimes, certainly at that time, I went and I just looked at my computer to see what emails may have come in, if there was anything of uh, immediate need. And I looked there and I saw one that's, you know, that I don't remember the title that was there, but it was the one that caught my attention. And I opened it and it was news from uh, Ananda Village that a very good friend of mine had died that night. And they said, so-and-so, sorry to say, has passed on. She had uh, brain cancer and it had come on very quickly. As a, and within a matter of weeks after that brain cancer came on, she passed on last night at 3.30. The exact time in, in the email that I had woken up and that experience had come to me and it just went away. And I immediately I meditated and, and was tuned into the, this person's consciousness and blessings. And I took it to mean it was not coincidental that somehow in some fashion, this very dear friend in passing had shared prayers, probably with many of her friends, as she had many, and had shared a prayer or a blessing with me. And I had been able to receive that and completely took away that darkness of um, disease that had been with me. Now, I, and so I, that stuck with me a very long, I thought about what happened there. And I noticed that as I looked back on it, and I still look back on it today, it, I remember that very distinct feeling of a darkness within me being, it's like being taken away. And what, when something is taken away, it reveals that which we are. And I realized that this dis-ease was that, was a, is a darkness. It's, a, it's not our natural state. So all, when we suffer from disease, whether it be physical, mental, spiritual, I think it's the important lesson we have to remember is that is not who we are. It is a temporary shroud, perhaps you might say a temporary covering over what, of who we are, but our real nature is behind that. And, the, and so the, the lesson, first lesson I came out of that, he says, don't identify, that wasn't who I was. It was just something covering me a hold of me, you might say came into me, grabbed me, and I was released. Now I was released from it because a certain joy had come. I was touched and I felt this person had probably prayed for a lot of people in, in her exiting of the body. She was a very high soul in an exiting of the body. Such a one feels great joy. And what is the impulse? when we feel joy. The impulse is to share that joy with others. It can't help it, but share that joy. And naturally, who are they going to share it with? Those people that are close to them in their heart. And so one, a sharing of that joy drove away the darkness that was shrouding me at that moment. Now it could be other things, I don't know, but I took it to be in that way. Now, very interestingly, at that same time, of 2010, 2011, uh, Diana, Naiswami, Diana and I, uh, who I think most of you know who Diana is, we were visiting Swami Kriyananda at a time when he had come out of the hospital and we were traveling 
uh, to Delhi from Pune and, and we went to see him to wish him well and to get his blessings on our journey that was about to take place. And we went there and he gave us a, a number of, thing, of things to consider. And one piece of advice he gave us, he, he said, and we serving in a way of being outreach, sharing these teachings with other people. He said, remember, it's not enough to share these teachings, you know, and which, you know, to us, well, okay, but he says, it's not enough to do that. I know you're doing, in a sense, implying, I know you're doing that, you're trying to do a good job, but that's not enough. You must share bliss. You must share joy, in other words. Because the teachings, yes, they have a power, but the teachings don't really change people. It's joy. It's what they stimulate or what they evoke in us. And they evoke joy. They evoke eventually or the bliss or they evoke peace or, or a sense of calmness or some divine state is being evoked by what we're practicing, what we're teaching. But if you give the teachings and there's no bliss, there's no joy evoked, well, there is something hollow about that. And so he says, remember, that's what. And so I took that very seriously. And there's a good, a good message that it's the bliss and the joy that changes people. And so for us here this evening and every week, we share prayers with people. But remember, prayers are hollow unless they contain something within them. And that should be, can be bliss, joy. And it's important when we pray for others, it's the joy that we can be a channel for, because it's not our joy. We're acting as a channel, but it's the joy, it's that divine message, it's that, it's that, that which is contained that in our teachings that changes people. It's the joy that's the active agent. And we have an opportunity to be a channel for that. But we cannot share something we don't have. Or we can try. I mean, it's not it's the God's joy. But yet we as an instrument have to be able to be a channel of that. And so we have to be joyful in our own right. So to be effective in sharing our prayers, it's important that we share those, the, uh, that element that we're trying to bring to a person who's in distress, somebody who's diseased, body, mind, soul, spirit, what will change them? It's the upliftment of their consciousness into a higher state. And that can be summarized by saying, upliftment of others into the state of joy. And so we ourselves, when we share prayers, share, try to evoke within yourself at a divine feeling of some sort, joy, peace, love, and evoke that. And not, don't just repeat something and hope that, you know, it's going to happen. If we don't summon it, you might say, ourselves, and then and infuse that feeling to the degree we can, to the degree we can, sometimes we can't feel it, but our sincerity, I think, has a power all of its own to help evoke that. And then we find that our prayers can touch somebody. And just in some, and I think that prayer of blessing that I felt demonstrated to me the power that can be transmitted from one person to another to actually change other people. That prayer does work. Prayer changes people by uplifting their consciousness into a higher state and in the process, removing the darkness removing the sorrow. Sorrow is not, and disease is not the reality. It's underneath the soul's natural state of bliss, of joy. That's the reality. And disease is but a shroud. And so well, let's pull the curtains and ask God to pull the curtains. And let's be instruments of God in the pulling of those curtains. So let's We'll conclude this first introductory part. Let's do that now by sending out prayers to the world at large. And then we'll individually, we'll come back and one by one share prayers for individuals who have requested them in, in times of need. So let's summon, the, summon that sense of centeredness within ourselves by sitting up straight and feeling ourselves in the heart and try to summon consciously a feeling of joy there 
a feeling of love, compassion, a feeling of connection. Feel that. This is a tool that in so many ways is necessary for us to cultivate the ability to at will with no outward reason to add will to some enjoy into our heart. Let's do that if we can. Feeling that in the heart. And then directing that joy upward to the point between the eyebrows. Heart and spiritual eye working together, our will, our devotion, hand in hand. And let's now mentally project that out into the world at large that we be instruments of that. And in the prayers for the world at large and also for the individuals that we'll follow with, that our blessings as instruments for that joy touch many souls and that God's power bring light and joy and happiness, peace, resolution, take away the darkness. Let's pray together. Divine Mother, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art within all souls. Thou art within us. Manifest Thy healing presence, Thy love, Thy joy, Thy calmness, Thy peace in all souls everywhere, all Thy children. Let's rub our hands together. And let's send this blessing out with three ohms into the world. <clears throat> 